Thanks for joining us tonight. We're continuing our series called Absolutely Necessary, Extremely Important. Things that we really need to know, but even more than that, things that we need to act on. And so tonight our topic is the resurrection. And so I thought I would cut right to the chase and let's talk about six reasons why the resurrection is important. And, and if you have your Bible and, I, and you really need to get it for yourself, we're going to put the, the references on the screen, but we're counting on you to open up your Bible in some form. I have my Bible on my iPad right now. You might have it on your phone, your device. You might be old school and have it in printed form, but please get your Bible ready so that you can follow along and even more than that, read it for yourself because that way it sticks in your mind. So let's start with Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. And the first reason why the resurrection is important, and this is what we're going to read about right now, is resurrection power is available to you right now. Let's read Ephesians 1, starting with verse 18. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So there are several things about this power that are important. First of all, it's a resurrection power. It's the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Secondly, it's an ascension power. Not only did it raise Jesus Christ from the dead, but now he has been raised to that position of sitting at the Father's right hand in heaven. It's also a dominion power. Dominion means rule, authority, or lordship. And so because of Jesus death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, he now has dominion. He now has authority over every earthly authority that would consider themselves lords, masters, overlords, whatever you want to call it. Jesus has a greater authority over them. And then also, it is immediate power. It's an immediate power that's available to us right now. But even there... Even so, there's more than that. If we go on to verses 22 and 23 in Ephesians chapter 1, it says this. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So this power that we've just talked about, the different aspects of the power, God's power is designed to be released and revealed to the world not just in us as individuals, but his power is designed to be released into the world through the church, which is the body of Christ. That's not just an empty terminology. That means that we are literally the power, the body, Jesus Christ reaching into the world, and we are the avenue for that. We are the church. We say it a lot around here, but remember, the church is not about a building. We've learned a lot about that in the last few months. But the church is not about a building. The church is the people of God. It's you and me who have been called out of the world and dedicated to God. We've experienced the transformation that comes from salvation. And now we're sent back into the world in order to serve. And so this power is designed to be released into the world through the church that you and I are all a part of. So it's both individual power and it's collective power. Now, this power is individual in the sense that there is a role in the church that is unique to you. And if you don't fill that role, it will remain unfilled. Sometimes we like to criticize the church and we say, well, the church is not all that it could be. The church is not all that it should be. And maybe you're one of those people who likes to criticize the church. Have you ever thought about the fact that maybe the church is not all that it can be because you have not assumed your rightful role in the church. Therefore, something is left undone that really needs to be done. That's a very sobering thought, isn't it? So that power is individual to us, designed to be used and revealed to the world, but it's also 
a power that's revealed through the church, and the church only functions as each one of us takes our place in that unique role that God has called us to within the church. So let's talk about what the power is not. We've talked about what it is. Every once in a while, and I think you've, we think we've probably all experienced this, we go to start our car and it won't start. So what's the first thing that we think about? Must be the battery, right? Must be a dead battery. Maybe I left uh, my phone charger plugged into the lighter and somehow it, it stayed on all night and ran it down or the dome light was left on. And so the, the, the car won't start and so we have a dead battery. Well, how do we recharge that dead battery? If you're like me, you might use jumper cables or you take one of those charging units, zap it to get your car started, but then you take it home and you put it on a trickle charger. And so you let it recharge for hours, sometimes even overnight, until the battery achieves charging again. That's not what this power is like. This is an immediate power that's available right now. I like to use the illustration of our apartment in Moscow when we lived in an apartment. We, we lived on the fourth floor of an apartment building and right outside our window was an electric streetcar. Now, when we first moved into the apartment, it bothered us a little bit that, that, that those electric streetcars ran from 6 a.m. to about 1 a.m. They were only silent for about five hours a day, but pretty soon we got used to it. And the unique thing about those streetcars is they didn't run on the battery principle. You didn't have to fill up a tank. There was, a, there was an electric line over the tracks, and there were, there were outlets. There were, there were leads that connected to that line above the streetcar that made a connection. And when there was connection, there was power. The power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is much more like that power. As we stay in connection with God, that power is instantly available to us right now. Now, not only was that power available to re redeem our sins and transform us and make us into a new person, that power is also available to us for ministry. What's ministry? Some people get hung up on that term. He's a minister. She's a minister. Well, ministry is nothing more than serving other people. That's what ministry is. So God's power is not only available to you and to me to save us, but God's power is available to us for ministry in order to serve other people. You might know someone who's sick. You might know someone who's, been, who's in ICU. You probably can't get in to see them right now, but you can pray for them and believe God to heal them through your prayers because God's power is available to you. God's power is available to you in, in order to share the gospel with someone who's lost in their sin and to see their hearts changed and their lives transformed just like yours has been transformed. The second thing, the second reason why the resurrection is so important is this. Your future resurrection gives your present life meaning. Look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 to 58. Here's what it says. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The fact that Jesus was raised from the dead, resurrected, means that we will one day be resurrected as well. And that gives our lives, lives meaning. It's not all about right here and right now. We have an eternity that's much greater to look forward to. The third reason why the resurrection is so important is this. Everything you do for the Lord now will live on after you die. Because 
as we minister, right, as we serve, we're investing in eternal things. What things are eternal? The souls of men and women, of boys and girls. They are eternal. I love what we're doing here on Tuesdays. The PC Care Center where people can come and they can get groceries and they can get clothes and they can get prayer. They can be ministered to. And I love being around the volunteers, the people who come to serve here. They're so excited about what they're doing. It inspires me. One of them texted me the other day, and here's what she said. She said this, and I quote her. Love coming on Tuesdays and connecting with people. Why is that? Why does this volunteer love coming on Tuesday so much and connecting with people? Because she knows that she is vest investing in eternal stuff. Because everything that's not eternal is going to be gone one day. Everything that we spend so much time and energy holding on to and accumulating, it's all going to be gone. We need to invest in eternity. Fourth reason why the resurrection is so important is this. Christ's resurrection guarantees your own resurrection. Look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. One of my favorite passages, especially as I get older, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting with verse 11, says this. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Now I love this next verse, 2 Corinthians 4.16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away. We're dying a little bit every day on the outside, aren't we? Outwardly, we're wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary... But what is unseen is eternal. The other day I was polishing my glasses and the frame broke. Well, immediately I couldn't see very well. Everything was super blurry. I knew I had to do something right away. So I went and fortunately they still had my glass frames in stock and I was able to just buy a new pair of frames and they, they popped the lenses out of my old frames and put them into these frames. And when I got the new frames, I put my glasses on and what happened? Everything came into focus. It's like this in our lives. If we focus on the fact that outwardly we're wasting away, we're dying a little bit every day, we're getting older. If we focus on that, then we're dealing with and we're emphasizing the things that are seen. And Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, that we need to fix our eyes. This is 2 Corinthians 4.18. We need to fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. We're not to just fix our eyes on this life because it's only temporary, but we're to fix our eyes on what is unseen, and that is eternity. That is fixing our eyes on heaven. And what does that mean? It means that we need to invest in eternal things. We need to invest in people, reaching people, Serving people, ministering to people. The fifth reason why the resurrection is so important is this. You will be resurrected, not resuscitated. There's a big difference. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 42 through 44 says this. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. 
it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Paul's saying one equals the other. If you have a natural body, you're going to have a spiritual body. And by spiritual body, he means not your natural body with breath forced back into it, right? Doesn't mean that your, your body that's, that's uh, worn out, that somebody gives you CPR until they push air back into your lungs and you wake up again. That's not what eternity is going to be like. You can be resuscitated and still be stuck with your own body. And if you had bad lungs or a bad heart, you're still going to have bad lungs or a bad heart after you're resuscitated. But when you receive your new body, it's going to be brand new. You're going to be resurrected to a new body, an eternal body. Now, as Pastor Dale, he's been doing this series on heaven. What comes next? He talked about heaven, that when you get to heaven, you're still going to be you and I'm still going to be me. Now, for some of us, I might be unfortunate, but that, that's who we are. But we're going to be an eternal version of ourselves, the version of ourselves that God created us to be. Isn't that something to look forward to? And there are going to be people from all over the world there, every ethnic group. Pastor Dale said recently that if you don't like diversity, if you don't like people who look different than you, think different than you, talk different than you, then you're not going to feel comfortable in heaven because that's what heaven is going to be like. And then finally, the sixth reason why the resurrection is so important is that it's evidence of God's future judgment. Very sobering scripture in Acts chapter 17. And I want you to turn there. Take your time. Find this scripture. Acts 17 verses 30 and 31. It says, in the past, God overlooked such ignorance. Ignorance meaning idol worship. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. So according to this scripture, the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead, ascended to the Father, said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to, to give all of you the power to be influencers in the world, the evidence of that shows that God is serious about judgment, that he hasn't forgotten about sin, he hasn't forgotten about judgment, that a day of judgment is coming. And elsewhere in the Bible, if you want to take time to study that in 2 Peter chapter 3, it says, God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But it says that God is waiting in order to give everyone in the world an opportunity to repent. It's not that God is lax or God is uninvolved, but God is waiting for worldwide repentance to come. And that's something that we need to be praying for and working for and investing toward in the church. So there are six reasons why the resurrection is so important. First of all, the resurrection power is available to you right now. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available in your body and your soul right now. That means that if he saved one of us, he can save you. Think of the most spiritual person that you know. The person that's closest to God that you know. Maybe it's someone in your family. So many people have a praying mom or a praying grandma that just won't let go. Just keep praying and they keep praying and they keep praying for you. Think about this. If God can save them, he can save you. So no matter who you are, no matter what your situation is, as you're watching this, you can turn to Jesus because when Jesus was raised from the dead, he paid the penalty for your sin so that you could be transformed. So I want us to stop and pray right now. Whatever you're doing, I want you just to quiet yourself. And I'm going to pray a prayer and I want you to repeat it right where you are. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross. So that I can be forgiven of all my sins. 
Thank you that you were raised from the dead. And because of that, I will also be raised from the dead one day. But right now, I invite you into my life. I confess my sins. I ask you to forgive my sins and to make me new. Let the change begin in this moment and let change move from way down deep inside of me until it's reflected in every part of my life and in every part of my character. Jesus, right now, I give my life to you. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, your life changed. And from this point on, we want to help you. We want to come alongside of you. You can get a hold of us here at People's Church. We're not hard to find. You can go to peopleschurch.org forward slash next. Just let us know what you've done. Say, I've, I've made a decision to follow Jesus and you'll be amazed at how we follow through. We can't wait to connect with you. But let's talk about the other reasons again why I read the resurrection is so important. First, because that power is available to every one of us right now. Secondly, that because Jesus was raised from the dead and we're going to be raised from the dead one day, it gives right now meaning. It's not all about what's happening right now. It's not all about the present circumstances. There's so much more. And then third, everything we do for the Lord now will live on long after we've died. And then fourth, Christ's resurrection guarantees your own resurrection and mine. And then five, you'll be resurrected, not resuscitated, not a better version of yourself, but a brand new you created for all eternity. And then number six, the resurrection is also an evidence of God's judgment on the world one day. And that should be motivating for all of us, not just for ourselves, but for others who, if they were to die today, would not spend eternity in heaven. So let's pray together. God, thank you. Thank you for this po these powerful passages of scripture that we have examined together. May they take root in our hearts and our lives. Help us to live. Help us to live not only for the present moment, but to live and invest in the future, to invest in eternity. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us and come back next week where we're going to talk about how the Holy Spirit works.